Now turn to part one. Part one. You hear a conversation between a car insurance agent and customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Listen carefully and answer the questions one to six. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Mary Fox. I am a car insurance marketing manager here. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, hello. I'm interested in buying some car insurance. Great. I'll show you a brochure then. What's your name, sir? Tom Jones. Just call me Tom. Easy to remember, isn't it? And your current address in the UK, Tom? It's flat one, Woodhouse, Wolf Crescent. Wolf Crescent is that in the Surrey Key area of East London? Yes. And what's your daytime phone number, please? My office number is o two o seven seven eight eight one two one two. And could I ask you what you do for a living? I'm a cafe manager. Okay, so can you tell me the engine size of your car, please, Tom? It has a two point zero litre engine. Thank you. And the model name? It's a Humax Dalton. Could you spell the model name, please? Yes, D A L T T O N. Oh yes, thanks. And when was it launched? It would have been in two thousand, I think. Lovely, right? I presume you've had a previous insurer recently. Yes. Right. We need to know the name of the car insurance company you were with before. Certainly, it was North Pole Safe. Thank you. And have you made any insurance claims within the last three years? Yes, three cases in two thousand and five. And what was your problem? It was a broken window. That's fine, Mr. Jones. Everything sounds fine so far. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions seven to ten. Now listen and answer questions seven to ten. And will you include any other drivers on the insurance? Yes, just one woman. And her name? Jenny Orion. Could you spell her full name, please? Jenny Orion. That's J E double N Y O R I O N. Okay. Thank you. And what relationship is she to you? She is my business partner. And what will you be using the car for? Well, mainly for business use. Business use.、Mm. Will you be using it for delivery? Yes, always. Anything else? No, that's it. And finally, when would you like to begin the insurance? 
I need it from the first of February. Right. Could I check the tick box on the computer now? Yes. Go ahead. And that comes out at seven hundred pounds per year. Well, it's quite a bit higher than I've been paying until now, but it's just about okay. Great. How would you like to pay, cash or card, sir? I'll use a credit card. Certainly, sir. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part two. You'll hear a tourism program, Tourism Information Centre in Bath City. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen carefully and answer the questions eleven to seventeen. Thank you for visiting the Elephant Tourism Centre in the city of Bath. First of all, we have various attractions to see in the Roman Bath city, and we'd like to offer plenty of information that you may not have thought of before. How about a tour of the city by bus? There are four main stations, from south to north. Stop A, Palace Gardens. Stop B, Pulteney Bridge. Stop C, Royal Crescent. And stop D, Queen Square. You can visit the main booking office at stop A. The first tour bus leaves at 9 a.m., and the last one at 6 p.m. There are also many good attractions you can see along the street. At stop A, if you have a break, you can visit the beautiful garden of the Middle Ages. It is like Rome. It's very close to the ticket box. You can also enjoy a concert in the centre of the garden. Stop B. Why don't you visit the riverside restaurant, with its landscape across the path? It is a place where you can sit and enjoy the spectacular views over the old hockey playground, and ballrooms outside of the old buildings of the city. Stop C is the Royal Crescent, built between 1767 and 1774. It is a residential road of 30 houses, laid out in a crescent in the city of Bath, England. It was designed by the architect John Wood. It is among the greatest examples of Georgian architecture to be found in the United Kingdom. And is a Grade One listed building. 
further along at stop D, Queen Square. The most exciting place to visit is the Roman baths, used for the buildings housing their public baths. After sightseeing, you can visit the Team Bath Spa, but you have to pay for that by the hour. Before you hear the rest of the program, you have some time to look at the questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Besides, there are city boat tours. Two local tour companies give special services. The Roman Boat Company operates all of its tours with an audio tour guide service available in English, German, French, Korean, Japanese and Chinese. Tours leave from 9am every 30 minutes. The boat departs from the Palace Gardens. Tickets are valid for 48 hours. Another company, the Best Boating View Company, is available with a live commentary in English only. Boats depart from Pulteney Bridge every hour from 9.30am with the last boat departing at 6.30 p.m. This service also offers refreshments free of charge. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You'll hear a conversation between student Tom and a tutor about a voluntary program. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer the questions 21 to 24. Hello, Tom Thompson, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Come in and sit down. Thanks. Right. Well, Tom, as we explained earlier, in this part of the interview, we would like to talk through your application form your career experience and educational background, and so on. And then in the second part, you will go for a group discussion. Group discussion. Yes, I see. So, was your first degree in business studies? Yes, but I also majored in educational science. And you graduated in 2002? And I know you have been doing some teaching. Yes, I worked as a volunteer in a primary school in Vietnam. I was there for about three and a half years in total, from 2003 to, um, 2006. Great. What kind of organisation was it? It's a voluntary organisation called Asian Cross. OK. 
Yes, I have heard of it. It operates in several Asian countries, doesn't it? And what kind of school was it? A rural primary school in a shanty town. Right. And what did you teach? A variety of subjects in different areas.、Um, I did mainly arithmetic with levels one to three, and some English conversations with level five. Then, in my final year, I took on some construction and gardening. That's level six. Right. That sounds great. I also ran the subsistence farming in a rural area with residents. How interesting! Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. And how did you join the voluntary organization? Actually, a friend mentioned them. The Asian Cross do applying enlightening, and make voluntary works and so forth. So, what did you get from them? Well, I was so happy to help the people with my efforts. At the end, I was so proud of myself as a volunteer. Sometimes I was really sharing a lot and understanding the others. Hmm, I see. And I also found I was able to improve my vision and dream for the future dramatically. I made up my mind to extend my voluntary work to other countries as well. Right. Did you travel at all while you were there? Yes, I did. We set up a very successful project, teaching computer class, and donating second-hand bicycles locally. Really? Sometimes while working there, I went to London to raise money for building new farms, with a part-time job. So, what's next? The local governor sponsored all volunteers' visas and paid for their accommodation and travel costs. You're lucky, aren't you? Anyway, why did you want to teach construction and gardening? I had a couple of part-time jobs when I was at university. I have now realised I like teaching best, and I chose construction and gardening because they are my favourite hobbies, and because I think they have so many useful applications. Okay. You have certainly had some interesting work experience. I'll ask you now. That is the end of part three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part three. Part four. You'll hear part of some information given by the Student Union Centre. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully, and answer the questions thirty-one to forty. 
We are very happy that the college authority has accepted the students' suggestions about the design of a new library and student union building. We deeply appreciate the beneficiaries of college library facilities for current students. We have researched the best ways to find out student opinions and use them to help us make decisions. Initially, there was a student union meeting that was held last week. Then, in the main hall in King's Building, we invited all students to hand in suggestions for the design of new buildings, placing cards in a suggestion box. The suggestions enabled us to design a questionnaire that was completed by around three thousand students over one month. As a result, the college authority collected the results and made a report. This presentation is basically a workshop based on the main points that came up in the questionnaire. Most of all, regarding the critical areas of the site, we reviewed the four options which you have suggested. Number one will be in the centre of the college, near the fountain. Number two will be at the corner at Maple in the north. Number three will be near the student accommodation building, and number four will be near the business school. We have reflected students' need to cite reasons for or against these sites. So there are a number of issues with all four sites. It seems site one was so crowded and noisy. Site two. Is a popular choice because it's quiet and a short distance from the lecture rooms. Site three was unpopular due to parking problems. Finally, number four was too far from the other colleges. Furthermore, our second suggestion for the student union building is obviously the facilities for leisure and sports. We would like a big fitness centre, and if possible, a swimming pool that is close to competition size. Also, we want to set up a variety of things that cater to students' needs, such as a job centre, travel agent, language centre for international students, internet cafe, and so forth. Additionally. At the student counselling centre, and luxury refectory will also be there. However, we are also considering a drama theatre. Just over thirty percent of the respondents were in favour of this, and twenty-five percent were against it. Around forty-five percent were neutral. Seventy percent of respondents are in favour of the student union building being located close to the accommodation buildings, as this will be more convenient for them. Although there are some concerns about security and fire. Also, the student union deeply insisted that a video surveillance system and security guard team that check the student union ID cards. Are in place. Finally, these buildings will be maintained well, as this is important for students' welfare. As I said, further details and information will be given in our college newspaper. But for now, I would be glad to answer any questions you may have. For That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.
Here are some tips on how to get a nine band in IELTS. Listening. Practice listening to a variety of English accents. This will help you to get used to the different ways that English is spoken and to pick up on important information. Predict what the speaker is going to say before they say it. This will help you to focus your attention and to understand the speaker's meaning more easily. Don't worry if you don't understand every word. Try to focus on the main points and to infer the meaning of any words that you don't know. Check your answers carefully before submitting your test. Reading. Develop a wide vocabulary. The IELTS reading test is a test of your vocabulary as well as your reading skills. Make an effort to learn new words and to practice using them in context. Read a variety of English texts. This will help you to get used to the different styles of writing that are used in the IELTS reading test. Don't try to read every word in the passage carefully. This will waste your time. Instead, skim the passage to get the gist of it, and then focus on reading the questions and the parts of the passage that are relevant to the questions. Don't spend too much time on any one question. If you're stuck on a question, move on and come back to it later. Writing. Understand the question carefully. Make sure that you know what you are being asked to write about and what the requirements of the task are. Plan your essay before you start writing. This will help you to stay organized and to make sure that you cover all of the important points. Use a variety of sentence structures and vocabulary. This will show the examiner that you have a good command of the English language. Proofread your essay carefully before submitting it. Make sure to correct any grammar or spelling errors. Speaking. Practice speaking English regularly. This will help you to become more fluent and confident. Think about what you want to say before you speak. This will help you to organize your thoughts and to deliver your answers more clearly. Use a